Welcome to This Week in Warframe, a series where I keep you updated on the past week of Warframe, from announcements made by DE that don't necessarily warrant their own videos to community fan art posts and updates. So without further ado, let's go over these announcements and news from the 26th of November to the 2nd of December. Now straight off the bat we had update 22.5, which released Vault's Proto Skin Collection. Now the collection includes Vault's Proto Deluxe Skin, the Diode Hammer Skin, and the Cathode Sign Dana. And because we received these cosmetics, we also received some changes to his abilities. So they added a 4 second minimum duration for enemies affected by Discharge's CC effect. This means if you go into negative duration, enemies will stay CC'd for the full 4 seconds, no matter your negative duration percentage. Now they also removed the passive 5 energy per second drain from Vault's shield while moving, however the 1 energy per meter drain still remains. They also increased the base DPS of Discharge from 450 at max rank to 750, as well as making it so Discharge can be casted in the air. And before I continue, it should be noted that both Rebecca and Scott have commented on the fact that these are not the only changes that will be coming to Vault, so expect some more in the future, as they're still currently working on his kit. And as of making this video, they have two versions that they're currently looking at, so let's hope they work it out and remove the damn damage cap from his fourth ability, as even Scott stated, he is not a CC Warframe. Now besides Vault's changes and cosmetics, there was also one major addition in this update, and that was that drop sentient cores will now have markers attached to them when they're dropped by enemies. And next up we had update 22.5.1, which released only a small number of fixes for the base game. As for console players, you received update 22.3.5 during the week, with Operation Plague Star already underway as of making this video. Now that operation will run up until the 11th of December at 2pm Eastern Time for you guys, so if you haven't started yet, make sure you do so. Now the update also includes the Deluxe Skins for Necros and Ember, the Sleight of Hand changes for Mirage, as well as Bounty changes. Now all the information for that update can be found on the forum post with a link to those in the description, as well as everything else that I talk about in today's video. Now it was also announced for console players that the Planes of Idol on Twitch Drops campaign has been extended by one week and will now end on the 13th of December. We then received a preview and announcement regarding the content arriving in Tenogen Round 11, 16 Warframe skins, 4 Warframe helmets, 6 Cyandanas, and 8 weapon skins in the round. Now for players unaware, Hydroid's Prime Access Pack will be ending on the 12th of December, so if you want to pick up his accessories before they enter the vault, make sure you do so. As for the frame, you know the drill, you can get that after they retire from the Prime Access program. Now because Hydro's Prime Access is retiring, this also means that one Prime Warframe and a couple of Prime Weapons will be entering the Vault sometime afterwards. So the Primes entering the Vault will be Saren Prime, the Spira Prime, and the Nakana Prime. So if you want those items or you just want to make some plat in the foreseeable future, make sure you farm the relics before they get vaulted. We then had D releasing a survey for players regarding the Plains of Eidolon and how they feel about the update as a whole. Now on top of that, they also want to know your thoughts on the future of open world whole sets in Warframe. So if you want to give your two cents, you want your opinion heard, make sure you head over there and participate in the survey. Now during prime time, they also announced the winners of the Tano's Greatest Challenge Contest, which was the 22 second Warframe Trailer Contest. Now the winners are Nihil VX taking first place, Nyx53 taking second, and Aqua5 taking third. The links to all the winners will be in the description. I definitely suggest checking out first place, as his use of editing is fucking brilliant. Now to finish up this segment, we had Devstream 102 on Friday, which was a sound-based Devstream. So there wasn't a lot in terms of physical announcements, but we did learn a few things. So, during housekeeping, it was announced that Octavia's next sound pack will be EDM-based, and that the next Prime Unvaulting will be halted until January, opposed to the previous date of sometime during this month of December. Now we then received our first look at how the weather system will transition in terms of sound and function once they release it, and additionally Rebecca commented in terms of mechanics that the spawn rates of fish will be increased during the rain phase of the weather pattern. Good 
Now they also hit us up with the sounds of the upcoming Tenno Pump shotgun. More organic. So that's what you're hearing is the build up of layers. Yeah. Let's do it. as well as announcing that low health audio changes will be coming in the future of the game, basically to alert players that their health is low. What will happen is the audio will get distorted the closer you are to death, and the clearer it'll be with the more health you have. They also announced that Orbiter Jukeboxes may be arriving in the game in the future, basically allowing us to listen to the game's soundtrack in the Orbiter, which if I recall correctly was a player's concept during Tenocon 2016's concept contest. But for some reason no one else remembers that contest, but if you do make sure to leave it in a comment just to let me know that I'm not crazy. Now the final thing to note regarding Devstream 102 was that they showed how they created the sounds for Gara and the Terrorless. So if you're interested in that, I highly suggest checking out the Devstream, going to the timestamp guy in the comment section and going straight to that, because it is really fucking interesting. Anyway, that's all the relevant D information that I could gather for this week, so as usual, we'll finish the video up with a few highlights from the community. Now first up, here's something for people looking into game design, and that's an interview between Josh Diener, who is a hard surface environment artist at Digital Extremes, and Kyril Tokarev of 80 Level. Now the interview is quite telling as Josh talks about his experiences working on Warframe, as well as his personal processes when it comes to creating assets for Overwatch, Warframe, and Halo 5. It's definitely worth a read if you're interested in how some of the assets in Warframe and other games are made. Now besides that post, we had Reddit user Sasso Duck's 4K capturer image titled Sentient Hunter, and then ZTH Dash's I Was In A Dying Dream Mag Capture Shot, and finally there was La Ghetto Chicken's Nidus Capture Edit. Now that's it for this week in Warframe. If you found the video informative, make sure to leave a like. If you think you can improve upon something, you wish to share your opinion on one of the topics that I mentioned, you can of course do so with a comment down below. If you missed out on last week's episode, I suggest you check it out by clicking the annotation on the screen right now, as it'll take you straight to the video. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.